God compares an akazu so that my household can be full. So when a principality brings government, you need another agent to compare people to come. You can build a church but to be empty. God designs this system for two reasons. Number one, to help us understand our oneness in the spirit. Because we are all members of the same body. In this kingdom, we interdepend on ourselves as we advance God's corporate agenda. And so God has designed this system to help us understand our oneness in the spirit. We are not different. We are one body. In fact, Paul was teaching along this line in Ephesians chapter 4 from verse 1 to verse 5 to show us the depth of our connection. And he began to itemize. He said, I, the prisoner of Christ. Can we project that scripture? He said, I, the prisoner of Christ, beseech you that you walk worthy of the vocation. Walk worthy of the vocation wherewith you were called. So Paul is telling us one of the ways to walk as a Christian is to walk in unity. Because as you go down verse 2, you see what Paul said. Verse 2. Maybe I should turn this way. He said, with all loneliness and meekness, with long suffering, forbearing one another in love. Forbearing one another in love. So love is not just a feeling. Love is a very serious responsibility for us to be able to coexist in unity and in love. Paul told us there must be humility. That's lowliness of heart. Project the scripture. Don't bother about me. <laughs> Number two, there must be meekness. The ability to put ourselves under authority. Number three, he said there must be long suffering. And number four, he said there must be forbearance. So you see that this thing goes to tell the level of our maturity. It's not just a feeling. You can't relate with the next person as one. Except as you have matured to a point where your life models lowliness, meekness, forbearance, and long-suffering. And then you go to verse 3. Paul continues to itemize. He said, endeavoring to keep the unity of the spirit in the bond of peace. And then he began to show us the depths of our oneness. He said there is one body, one spirit, even as we are called into one hope of your calling. Verse 5, he said one Lord, one faith, one baptism. And finally verse 6, he told, told us one God and Father of all who is above all, in all and through all. So it is one God that superintends over all of us. It is one God that is in all of us. And it is one God that is walking through all of us. So if you see one Christian manifest a dimension, it's not about the person. It's about the grace on his life. It's the same God that is in you that is at work in that. See from this system, is to acknowledge what they carry. That's why I say if you give to a prophet, not as a gift, in the name of a prophet there are many times when you show up and then you just love people for loving them but there are many times when you do something you say i'm not doing this one for you as my friend i'm doing this one as a disciple your brother wants to go out for soul winning and you say please i have ten thousand take it's not a gift i'm giving it to you as a laborer in the kingdom this <laughs> Because there is a reward attached for acknowledging that grace. I see that you have passion for soul winning. If I want to buy you lunch, I can buy you. But this one, I'm giving to you for the purpose of soul winning. It's a grace that you carry. I'm honoring that grace. As you acknowledge it, something will happen to you. If you give to a prophet as a friend, you may not receive the blessing of the prophet. If you give to a disciple as a friend, you may not receive the blessing. And I'm not saying don't. But I'm saying there are times when you acknowledge people for what they carry. Sir, I know there is the healing unction on your life. I acknowledge it. Sir, I know there is a gift for wisdom on your life. I acknowledge it. The moment you acknowledge it, it starts working. It's not everything that takes prayer. Certain things takes acknowledgement. Some of you here have not acknowledged that your biological parents can change your story. 
you think he's a professor somewhere you think you don't the moment you acknowledge what somebody carries the power begins to work receive a prophet in the name of a prophet receive a disciple so number one honor the grace number two acknowledge the grace and number three place a demand on it many people don't place demands if you honor and acknowledge and you don't place demand it may still not work sir you are a prophet speak to me as a prophet i'm tired of talking stories with you and then you just see the oil begins to rise i am sick you have the grace for healing pray for me i recognize that you have that grace i honor that grace but that's not enough speak over me the world was created by faith they just shall live by faith and mountains move by faith the devil know he knows this truth Habakkuk chapter 2 verse 4 romans 1 17 they just shall live by faith hebrews 10 38 Galatians 3 level. The just shall live by faith. 2 Corinthians 5 7. We walk by faith, not by sight. Because faith is our insurance. And so every man who begins to function by faith, the devil knows that his matter is a forgotten matter. There is nothing he can do about the faith man. So he fights that system. He doesn't want you to function by faith because he knows the power of faith. And so if you want to say enough is enough, make sure you are saying it from the place of faith. Because that is when it can command result. And faith is not something you just wish. There is a system that procures faith. If you want to walk in faith, there is a system that procures faith. And I give you five of them very quickly. Number one, the word. Romans 10, 17. It says faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So every one of us seated here can make a mess of Satan if we open ourselves to the word of God. Anybody and everybody can become a faith giant. The question is, are you feeding on what brings faith? As you receive the word of faith, faith grows in your spirit. And when faith grows, you can talk and Satan will obey. Jesus was teaching in Mark 11 from verse 23 to 24. In fact, from verse 22, it says, have this kind of faith. And Bible scholars told us, Jesus said, have, have the God kind of faith. And he went further to tell us in verse 23, if there's a mountain before you, it says, say unto that mountain, be thou removed, be thou cast away into the sea. And if you shall not doubt in your heart, but you shall have what you believe, whatsoever thing you believe, your declare shall come to pass. That means we are all mountain movers the reason some of us are not moving mountain is because our faith is not activated and our faith is not activated because we are not hearing the word of faith faith cometh by hearing faith comes so if you hear faith will come and if faith come you can level your mountain this is a system of your advantage everybody here because if god only allows it to be men there may be a season of your life where you are isolated. Does that mean you are hopeless? No. That's why in addition to the system of men, God also has intrinsic systems that can sustain us. You can go to a place where everybody is godless. You can go to a place where you are isolated. It doesn't mean you become hopeless. So when you don't find men, find faith. You need it. But the first way to build faith is by hearing the word faith coming by hearing and hearing by the word of god the second way to build faith is by prayer jude verse 20 you dearly beloved building up yourselves upon your most holy faith praying in the holy ghost now this is the technology only the word of god brings faith but there are other technologies for energizing faith so he didn't say receive faith by praying he said build up yourself upon your most holy faith that means you already have the faith but that faith can be weak for you to function at the highest level of your current faith they say you must live a prayerful life most of us know especially those of us who are ministers you can go for one meeting now pray for the dead pray for the blind pray for the deaf they are healed two days later you are going for another meeting and you are afraid of praying because 
and many things can dampen faith discouragement challenges can dampen faith controversies can dampen faith so a man can have the faith to open deaf ears a man can have the faith to change situation but he can be in a state of faith where he can't even talk but when you pray you are built up so that you function at the highest level of your faith so the second thing that helps your faith to work is prayer you receive faith by the word you strengthen faith by the word then you build up yourself in faith by prayer building up yourselves upon your most holy faith praying in the holy ghost praying in the holy ghost and the way this thing happens is that when you start praying god begins to show you things those things he shows you are the things that encourages your faith jeremiah 33 verse 3 say ask of me i will answer he said but i don't only answer i will show you great and mighty things that you know not of so you may have faith it may not work if you want your faith to work pray the scripture we read from mark 11 23 if you go to verse 24 of that scripture you are going to see the way faith is activated jesus was the one teaching he said therefore i say unto you this is the man who can move mountain he said that in verse 23 he said if you command the mountain it will go in verse 24 he shows you the dynamics he said therefore i say unto you what things soever you desire don't just begin by declaring he said when you pray believe that you receive them and you shall have them so prayer is the precursor for mountain moving faith if you don't have prayer the faith may be there but the faith will not be alive the third thing that must happen to your faith is fasting periodic fasting matthew chapter 10 jesus sent 70 men out they cast out devils faith was on fire matthew 17 the same man met another person who was demonized they started struggling what happened you were the ones who went out 70 of you all of you came back there was not one that didn't cast out devils all of them were declaring the devils were subject to us the demons were subject to us in thy name few chapters later they started struggling with one boy who was deaf and dumb and they labored there until jesus came down from the mountain and jesus cheaply cast out the devil meanwhile the father of the boy didn't even help them embarrassed them publicly my son is terribly vexed of demons i brought him here your disciples couldn't cast him <laughs> oh god at least show some regard say it quietly and why will you embarrass them like that if you don't exercise faith that's why circumstances will embarrass you and jesus turned and looked at them you perverse generation how long will i be with you bring the boy here one word the demon left they now went back to him later i said master why couldn't we cast out this demon we know we have faith we're not afraid there's something you do to your faith for it to produce results and jesus told them this kind goeth not but by prayer and by fasting you add fasting to your faith to have results this is why most of us have faith but it's weak matthew 17 verse 20. number one he told them because of your unbelief number two he told them this kind goeth not but by prayer and fasting you can have faith and still be in unbelief every one of us who is born again the bible said god dealt to us the measure of faith but things can make you walk in unbelief and unbelief will negate your faith if you want to deal with unbelief you must fast and fast periodically if you don't fast your faith will be dormant and faith is a system of advantage in the spirit number four what energizes your faith trials <laughs> some of the challenges you are going through are opportunities for you to exercise faith that's why god kept quiet you have prayed it has not gone it's a school and i tell my people anything god allows you to go through he allowed it because your faith can handle it go and read psalm 91 verse 7 he said a thousand shall fall by your side ten thousand by your right hand it shall not come near you 
only with your eyes you shall behold and see the recompense of the wicked so anything god allows to come near you is because your faith can handle it every day of your life there are eleven thousand arrows that god removes that you are not aware of a thousand by your side ten thousand by your right hand so eleven thousand attacks you don't know them god handles those ones the ones he, he allows are the ones your faith can handle so trials come to energize your faith james 1 verse 2 and 4 it's not every trial that god will take you out of he will allow you grow through them he didn't bring them but they will be benefit and beneficial to you my brethren count it all joy when you fall into diverse temptations he said knowing this that the trying of your faith work at patience and he said but let patience have a perfect work that you may be perfect and entire wanting nothing this is how faith is built the kind of faith that can make you tell satan do your worst see when we tell satan sometimes do your worst it's not because we have all the answers but we are telling satan that nothing you do can change our resolve so there is a victory you have by stopping satan there's another victory you have by standing and going through the crisis all of them is victory at the end of the day god will be glorified and so you don't just need the faith that sharpens you to get results you also need the faith that toughens you to go through crisis some of the greatest of men you celebrate if you know their warfare you will never desire greatness but they are standing because they have been toughened and that toughness is what equips them to lead us count it all joy when you go through diverse trials at the end of the day when you come out then you will see that all those things will turn out to your advantage and the last thing that energizes your faith are encounters encounters when god wants to help your faith he begins to give you encounters abraham was struggling to believe god until genesis 15 verse 5 to 6 god told him step out and gave him an encounter look into the heavens see the stars if you can number them that is how your children will be that was when abraham believed god and it was counted to him for righteousness these are systems of advantage see when we tell you enough is enough when we tell satan it can't happen again we are talking from a premise it's important for you to understand the premise that we are talking from there are times when we tell satan get lost because we know that even if we are overwhelmed there are brothers and sisters around us to strengthen us he said bear one another's burden fulfill the law of christ we know and there are other times when we tell satan you can do nothing because our faith has prevailed i quoted for us from first john 4 verse 4 yesterday he said this is the victory that overcomes the world even our faith first john 5 4 same scripture this is the victory that overcomes the world so when we are talking there is a context when we are talking there is a premise and the second premise is the premise of faith the third system of advantage god has given to us is the system of the anointing the system of the anointing acts 10 38 you see the way jesus mesmerized satan by the anointing little wonder for 30 years jesus was just growing in virtue and character because he knew the superior the supremacy of the anointing he wasn't in the rush to talk 30 years meanwhile he had all the messages he needed from age 12 because at the age of 12 he could already confound the doctors of the law the bible said for three days he sat with them in the temple he asked them questions they didn't answer he was the one that answered the question he was asking them questions and producing the answers so at the age of 12 he was ready to take his word but he knew the place of the anointing so he waited until matthew 3 from verse 15 he went to john's baptismal service and says to be baptized and john said no i should be baptized of you he says suffer it to be so for now does it become us to fulfill all righteousness something needs to come upon me and this baptism is the open door is the access point because god had told john already 
that the one you see the spirit descending upon like a dove is the Messiah. So he knew that the anointing won't come except as he goes through this process of humiliation. And so he humbled himself to be baptized. The moment he was baptized, Matthew 3, 17, the Bible said the spirit of God descended upon him like a dove. And that spirit drove him to the wilderness to be tempted. After he was tempted, Luke 4, 14, he said he returned in the power of the spirit. That was all he was waiting for. Jesus knew that the anointing is a system of advantage. So he routed the path that God designed for him to walk through to have the anointing. He waited 30 years for the anointing to come. The moment the anointing came, even before he spoke, the Bible said the land of Zebulun, the land of Naphtali, by the way of the sea, beyond Jordan, Galilee of the Gentiles, the people that sat in darkness had become a great light. A carpenter had changed to a great light. The anointing. And look for 18. Jesus went into the synagogue. So you too can read the, the scroll. Yes. But I don't want to read it like the Pharisees. I was waiting for the anointing to read it. And the Bible said in Luke 4 18, he took the scroll of Isaiah and he located where it was written. The spirit of the Lord is upon me. For he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the broken hearted. My goodness. To preach deliverance to the captives, recovery of sight to the blind, and to set at liberty them that are bruised. All of this is the operation of the anointing. This is the advantage. When it talks, ears open. I see. Challenges change. It's the anointing at work. That's why he waited for the spirit of the Lord to be upon him. And when all his exploits were summarized in Acts 10 38, he said how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and power who went about doing good healing all that were oppressed of the devil for God was with him and I told us yesterday concerning the anointing there are two things you must know I gave us one yesterday and the first thing I gave us is that you must know that you are anointed and you must not just know that you are anointed you must know that you are anointed with the same anointing on Jesus because Acts 10 38 said he was anointed with the Holy Ghost and power. Acts chapter 1 verse 8, the one we also received was the Holy Ghost and power. He said not many days from now you shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you. So it's the same ingredient of anointing that was on Jesus that is on our lives. You must realize it. You are anointed with the same anointing on the life of Jesus. You need to know this. That's why you can do ministry. If you are not anointed, there's no way Jesus will commit the work to you. The Bible says all of us who are saved, he made us ministers of reconciliation. There is a unique anointing for the fivefold, but there is also the believer's anointing so that we can all do the work of the ministry. I'm sure we know that the work of the ministry is not for the fivefold. It's for the believer. Ephesians 4.11 to some he gave to be apostles. To some he gave to be prophets. To some he gave to be evangelists. To some he gave to be pastors and teachers. For the equipping of the saints. For the work of the ministry. You can't do the work of the ministry without the anointing. That's why Jesus gave all of us the anointing. So that we can do the work. So you must understand that you are anointed. That's the first way to activate the anointing. Then the second thing about the anointing is to understand the laws that make the anointing work. I'm stating these advantages. I'm giving you how they work so that whether you manifest it or not is your choice. That's why I spoke about men. I told you to receive from men. You must honor them. You must acknowledge what they carry and you must place demand on it. I told you about faith and I told you faith comes by hearing the word. You exercise faith by prayer, by encounters. You exercise faith by, by putting it to work. You exercise faith. I gave you all of those methods. Now I'm talking to you about the anointing. The anointing is on your life, but there are laws that make it work. And the first law of the anointing is that God must be with you. Acts 10 38, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and power who went about doing good, healing all that were oppressed of the devil. Why? For God was with him. 
God must be with you. I know theologically speaking, the Holy Ghost has come to be in you and with you forever. But that's not all there is about God being with you. Paul said the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Spirit. For the anointing to be active in your life, there is a demand for the communion of the Spirit. If you don't have the communion of the Spirit, the anointing will not work. Jesus had it. Mark 1 35. He said every day, a great while in the morning, he went to a solitary place. There he prayed. He had a communion. The apostles just wake up and they see him coming down from the mountain. He said, let's go to the town. And deaf ears, open, blind eyes, see. They thought it was talking. He takes communion. That's why when the apostles had one demand from Jesus, they said, teach us to pray. We have seen something about your life. Men see the miracle, we see your communion. Teach us to pray. We are also inferring now that this is what John too had. Teach us to pray. Number two, if you want the anointing on your life to work, you must use it to glorify God. The first time Jesus manifested the power of the anointing, John chapter 2, at the wedding feast in Canaan, the Bible said this was done to manifest, to reveal his glory. Verse 11 of John chapter 2. So if you think the anointing is about yourself, you will corrupt yourself very soon. And that anointing will become useless. The anointing is not about self-exhortation. The anointing is not about self aggrandizement The anointing is not about self-preservation. That's why we have made a mess of ourselves using the anointing. Somebody comes, he thinks he has been intimidated for long. So he will show these people something today. And the moment he carries the microphone, he thinks the anointing is to help him restore his dignity. And he starts talking. Listen, when you are anointed, the anointing will make you shine. But it's not your errand to compare the anointing to exhort you. The moment you do that, Satan will enter your heart and corrupt you. Somebody carries the microphone, it's an opportunity to merchandise people. Because he thinks the anointing is for self-preservation. The moment three people fall under the power and one person's ear open, man of God has received an instruction from the Lord. If you are here and you, I just, go, I, I, I feel now that you should cast your bread upon the waters. If you have two, if you have two million, come to the front. Ah, you start acting drama. That's when you see man of God all of a sudden to let you know the weight of the anointing. Ah, 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 ah. What's up? There's something here. There's something here. Bring 500,000. You are a thief. The next thing, man of God's handkerchief is now 300,000. The Bible says handkerchiefs and aprons were used for healing the sick. There was no price tag there. We are not against you demonstrating the power that can fall on a handkerchief. But if you put price tag on it, that's not the one Paul used. As I was on the mountain, I prayed with 10 of these handkerchiefs. I prayed with them for 40 days. And God told me the power of God is on it. Now, I want to help just 10 people. If you have 2 million, pick one. And it will act as if, it will act as if, that is a thief. When you see some people wrong, they, you know the problem. The anointing may be pure, but the vessel is corrupt. And you are not dealing only with the anointing. You are dealing with that corrupt vessel. That's why you hear some people. Some people impart you. The next thing you start dreaming, you are having, you are having fornication. And the next thing destroys your family. You don't know. They are corrupt vessels. These ones are they. They are they are Balaam on the altar. They are Balaam. Before you see, water has come out. I'm not against it, but if you put money, you are a thief. Because the Bible didn't tell us they were sold. Allow people to give out of love for God. Allow them to give out of honor. When they mature, they will give for kingdom advancement. Teach them giving from those perspectives. So that they will do it from the place of revelation. Some will tell you, ah, what is on them now? Come and touch my shoe. This is for fruit of womb. What I'm sensing now is for fruit of womb. Touch my shoe. And as we are touching it, bring 100,000. And you'll see people running. You know, they'll... <laughs> it's difficult to address this because it has become the order of the day. 
And when you are addressing it, it looks as if you want to, to victimize people or call them out. But these demonic practices must stop. The goal of the anointing is to glorify God. That's the errand. The moment Jesus manifested the anointing, he said, He revealed His glory, not your glory. And then, number three, if you want to stay in the anointing and function healthily in the anointing, it must be about people. Luke 4 18. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. That's the last time you heard me. The next thing you begin to see, all of the errand of the anointing was about people. The anointing is on you, not for you. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because He has anointed me to preach the gospel to who? The poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives, recovery of sight to the blind, set at liberty them that are bruised. The moment the anointing becomes about you, that's no longer the anointing of God. If you want to walk in the anointing, you must be conscious of others. The needs, the pains, the plight of others. That's why you were anointed. You were empowered for them. What God gives you for you is your faith. When they put the anointing on you, it's primarily to bless others. And I'm not saying the anointing won't bless you. But I'm saying your focus should not be about self. Your focus should be about others. These are the laws that govern the anointing. God must be with you through the communion of the spirit. Number two, God must be glorified. And number three, it must be about the upliftment of others. Systems of advantage. And then number four, which is the last one I deal with before I leave him. This morning is the system of the prophetic. This is the easiest way God helps men. I've not seen any dimension in the scripture that produces results effortlessly and excellently like the prophetic. When the prophetic comes to play, it shows the majesty of God. E Ezekiel 37 verse 1 to 14, you are going to see the brilliance of the prophetic. It said, the spirit of the Lord took the prophet, the hand of the Lord was upon me, and he carried me out in the spirit of the Lord and set me down in the midst of the valley which was filled with bones, dry bones. The guy affirmed that the bones were really, really dry. And God asked him, mortal man, can these bones live? So the man in question is not, is not operating as a superstar. It's what is on him that shows the excellency of God. Mortal man. Can these bones live? It's the only thou knowest. And God began to instruct him, prophesy. And this man prophesied. Now, you know that as far as man is concerned, death is the end of hopelessness. Now, when the man is not just dead, but he has decomposed, that is hopelessness to many powers. When he's not just decomposed, but the bones have dried up and they have detached. That is a situation that should not be attempted. But this man, by the instrumentality of the prophetic, God told him, command the bones, my goodness. And the guy spoke to bones. For those of you who know a little bit about science, you are going to understand the impossibility of what was about to happen. These bones didn't just separate. When these bones separated, it means tendons too had decomposed. And when they separated, some of the bones would have grinded to powder. Air would have carried them to different regions. So we are talking things that are not possible. But the guy commanded, every pottery bone that traveled by the air, the air that carried it had to bring it back. And connect it to everywhere that was degraded. And the bones began to connect to themselves. Skull is coming from one side. Limbs are coming from another side. And all the bones connected. And after bones connected, the sinews grew on them from nowhere. And you found a valley of dead men. That alone is scary. And God still commanded him. And the guy commanded the wind to fill them up. 
when they rose up that's the one that humbled me they didn't rise up as the men that died when they rose up they rose up as a mighty army so what the prophetic does is not to restore you to your normal state the prophetic restore you to a superior dimension that's the excellency of the prophetic so i'm not saying you were rich you lost your money and then the prophetic restores your money that's not what i'm saying when the prophetic restores what you lost it's not only money that will come back dignity will come back with it influence will come back with it that's what the prophetic does he brings you to an excelling realm of existence and it's not just for individuals even systems and territories can be uttered by the prophetic in second kings chapter 6 we saw a situation where women were eating their children i tell my people the purest form of love among men is not between husband and wife the purest form of love among men is between mother and child that's the only unconditional love you will find on earth the love between husband and wife is highly conditional but if women begin to eat their children know that the situation is a terrible situation but that was the context of this challenge and that was not all the king was stranded he didn't know what to do they were besieged on every side so if you even have money your money is useless because you can't go anywhere to buy anything and they sent to Elisha and Elisha shows up and tells them by this time tomorrow <laughs> this is against every law of economics by this time the prime minister says sir i too know god because he knew god enough to know about the window of heaven he said but even if the window of heaven were to open this is impossible and the prophet said you will see it you will not eat of it by this time tomorrow two cups of flour will be sold for one barley one, one, one shekel and one cup of one of shekel or of barley will be sold for one shekel by this time tomorrow and the systems began to readjust so much so that it wasn't soldiers that brought deliverance it wasn't king that brought deliverance it was four lepers rejected men in society that's the excellency of the prophetic men that were rejected in society they woke up suddenly why sit we here until we die and they went to the camp of the enemy guess what happened when they were coming that was where the mystery of the prophetic began the bible said the enemies were hearing four lepers walking like the sound of chariots how can the feet of four lepers sound like an army the prophetic because when they march angels blasted so fast when they march they heard trumpet the enemy ran from the land see when the prophetic comes it doesn't matter who you have it doesn't matter who you don't have there may be no cloud but the value will be filled that's the prophetic is the excellency of the prophetic and trust me in the new testament every one of us can prophesy it's called the rema word it can come but there is a law for the prophetic there's a law you can change things by the prophetic you can change things but there's a law what's the law of the prophetic number one speak as commanded that's why you can't speak until you have prayed there's a law speak as commanded in ezekiel 37 the man said i prophesied not as i thought not as i desired i prophesied as i was commanded if you speak what you hear you will have the result but the problem is that some of us have not tarried enough to hear because if you wait you will see if you wait you will hear jeremiah 33 verse 3 ask of me i will answer i will show you great and mighty things that you know not of so there are most of us are, em, are walking empty that's our problem we are not hearing your problem is not the circumstance your problem is the absence of the rema world and so no matter what is happening around you forget it go and look for words the day you catch words you can change your situation a man who carries words in his spirit is a man that cannot be defeated i spoke i prophesied as i was commanded the second law of the prophetic is that you must talk in accordance to the will of god in first Kings 17 verse 8 and 9 god told elisha after he locked the heavens he told him to go to the brook 
and there ba- uh, 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 ravens were bringing food they brought food for a, a period of time and they stopped and God told Elisha rise up go to Zarephath I've commanded the widow to feed you the man knew the will of God first Kings 17 verse 8 and 9 the moment he knew the will of God anything he says that is in alignment with that will will carry prophetic power so the first way to operate the prophetic is to prophesy as commanded the second way to operate the prophetic is to speak in alignment with the will of God I know God sent me here to deliver somebody so I may not hear God tell me by next week somebody a door will open but I came because I have secured God's way so when I'm standing here I can declare to somebody your restoration is now it is in line with the will of God so it will be energized that's how the prophetic works the problem with many believers is that they don't know the will of God the moment you know the will of God the jealousy of God is what brings it to pass in Jeremiah 1 12 he said I watch my word that I might bring it to pass if God sent you to Jalingo no matter what happens you know the will of God you can stand and say this land must obey the territory must open because I was sent here I wish I had time to share testimonies you will stand on the premise of the will of God and talk and see the way the jealousy of God will back it up the only time your walls will be empty if you are is when you are outside the will of God if you are within the context of the will of God when you talk your words carry power that's how the prophetic works and then finally the prophetic works under atmospheres why do you think before Elisha prophesied he said go and get me a mystery second Kings 315 I want to create an atmosphere there's an atmosphere where the Word of God thrives. there's an atmosphere and that's why prophets are sensitive to atmospheres bring me a minstrel and it came to pass when the minstrel played that the hand of God was upon him anybody who is in the prophetic monitors his atmosphere you can't come and speak negative things around him you can't come and talk down people around him you can't come and kill faith around him he knows his strength is tied to his atmosphere and you'll find most prophets they are minstrels or they are sensitive to sound they know there's something atmospheres does to the spirit of the prophetic you want to operate in the prophetic guard your atmosphere don't let people just come around you and talk fear it will choke you don't let people come around you and talk evil about others it will choke you you can't operate in the prophetic like that you need atmosphere of love you need atmosphere of faith you need atmosphere of joy you need atmosphere of generosity all of those things facilitate the prophetic spirit and so if you want to change things by taking advantage of the system of the prophetic your ears must be open to hear because you prophesy as commanded you want to change things by the system of the prophetic you must discern the will of God concerning a matter because it is in alignment with that will that you are energized and if you want to activate the system of intervention by the prophetic you must become very aggressive to guarding your atmosphere prophets don't play with the atmospheres because they know the implication this morning can I speak a word over someone he said dry bones shall live again that's the word I have for somebody this morning dry bones shall live again it doesn't matter what you have gone through it doesn't matter what Satan has done to you some of you listening to me now Satan has stolen five years from your life some of you listening to me now Satan has put you at a point where it looks as if your life is finished but I come to speak over you as one saint of God whatever it is that you have lost I decree and declare restoration now I say I decree and declare restoration now in the name of Jesus I prophesy over you every aspect of your life that is dead let the power of resurrection come upon you now I prophesy over you everything you have lost let there be a hundredfold restoration now in the name of Jesus the Bible says, although a tree be cut down they say at the scent of water it will sprout again 
I don't know what has been cut off, cut down from your life, but I speak over you by the word of the Lord. In the name of Jesus, resurrect again. Resurrect again. Resurrect again. In the name of Jesus. And I don't know what Satan has used to surround you. Your family may have been besieged. Your health may have been besieged. Your possibility may have been besieged. But the same way the word of the Lord came. And the whole territory was delivered. By this time tomorrow. I decree and declare. Everything shutting you out of opportunities. Everything shutting you out of God's plan for your life. I command them to shatter. I command the gates to open. Like the walls of Jericho. I command them to collapse now. In the name of Jesus. He say, a little one shall be a thousand. A small one shall be a great nation. I decree over you right now. Rise up and become a city set upon a hill. Rise up and become a city set upon a hill. That cannot be healed. In the name of Jesus. I decree over you now. Let your light so shine before men. Let them see your glory. Let them see your good works. And glorify your father.